Uh, let's give a name to this compound. Is that the one? Beta D um, fructo pyranose. Right. And this one is alpha D fructo Good. By the way, remember that pyranose and pyranose only refer to rings. Fructose is a five-membered ring. Pyranose is a six-membered ring. Very good. What type of functional group do we have going on here at this number two carbon? Uh, well, a hemiacetal? Or? Yeah, <laughs> oh, a hemiketone. Now we have a hemiketone. That makes sense because we started with a ketone. Right? We started with a ketone, but you can see that even here. Notice that there's no hidden hydrogens on this number two. It's attached to one carbon and then another carbon. So that also tells us that we should be talking about it in terms of the ketal, but it's only hemi because there's one OR group. Here's the OR group in the ring, and here's the OH, half and half. You can also see it's hemi because we've only had one alcohol attack. To get the full ketal, we'd have to have two alcohols attack. But we've seen that, that does, that's not the standard thing that happens for sugars. We usually only get to the hemi form. So this is a hemiketal, and this is also a hemiketal down here. So we can make, um, so the cyclic forms of monosaccharides are either hemiacetals or hemiketals. The cyclic forms of monosaccharides are either hemiacetals or hemiketals because they're formed by a single alcohol attack on an aldehyde or a ketone. Again, the big lesson of tonight is, uh, today is just like peptides and amino acids was just an application of carboxylic acid derivative chemistry, sugars are just an application of aldehyde and ketone chemistry. Let's continue with that theme then. This uh, is very important to realize. Oh, did I forget something? I mentioned the anomers, right? Uh, yeah. So this is what's called the anomeric carbon. Uh -huh. This is the anomeric carbon. Now, the anomeric carbon is the most reactive carbon in the sugar. It's more reactive than any of the other carbons, and we'll see why. This is the former carbonyl carbon. The anomeric carbon is the former carbonyl carbon. It's the one that has the two different forms, alpha and beta. Now, under acidic conditions, it's very easy for this hydroxy group to leave. Why is it so easy for this hydroxy group to leave? It can just sit, uh, look like this, and then when it leaves, we would get this. Why is it easier for this hydroxy group to leave than any of the other hydroxy groups? Because it's resonant, it's stabilized because it's tertiary rather than secondary. For plus charge. It's a tertiary carbon it's not a secondary carbon Now, this really is technically secondary because it's connected to two carbon chains. And say, over yeah. here, it also be two carbon chains. But you're on the right track. The difference is, if I put a positive charge over here, there would be two carbon chains and no oxygen. How does this oxygen stabilize this positive resonance? Because resonance electrons right. can push forward. Remember, that's the other big theme of the whole course here, resonance. By induction, we would think that the oxygen would destabilize the positive charge, but resonance beats induction. In fact, let's draw the resonance structure that shows how this stabilizes the positive charge. The oxygen can donate its electrons like this. Then we get a double bond here and a positive charge on this oxygen. So now I've shown these as two resonance structures of each other. So now we've seen why the anomeric hydroxy group is so easy for it to leave. It's easy for that hydroxy group to leave because the carbocation that's formed is stabilized by resonance. That would not be true for any of these other hydroxy groups. If any of the other hydroxy groups left, there would be no resonance to stabilize the positive charge. So that positive charge is not nearly as likely to form. Incidentally, um, one thing that's pesky about this, again, is you might write things differently than you see it in your notes. Your instructor might prefer to write the carbocation like this, to write this resonance structure. I prefer to write it like this because it shows that we, um, who's going to be the reactive atom here is the carbon, not the oxygen. But you might see it either way. In fact, the way your instructor might have written this is like this. Your instructor might like to show the oxygen pushing the leaving group off. 
And in a way, that shows us why this is a very good leaving group, because it can get pushed off by this oxygen. And then that would give us this resonance structure over here. I don't think we even talked about it. Uh, let's see, maybe he didn't go through the whole mechanism here for this. Okay, but what I'm doing here, I, I, I think we'll see in a second that this is an issue that you guys talked about. All right, but maybe he didn't go into detail, so we don't need to worry about it. But in the textbook or um, whatever, instead of just seeing the leaving group leave, you might see it pushed off by the oxygen. But it's totally a matter of taste, whether you draw this arrow or not, because this is just a resonance arrow. This is just moving pi electrons around within the same molecule. So if you want, you can put this resonance arrow in, and then the carbocation, so to speak, would look like this. But I, I myself prefer to write it like this, just because it's simpler. And then the carbocation looks like this. This is better because it's simpler, and it shows that now this is an electrophilic carbon. And you're missing that CH2O. Yeah. yeah. OK. All right, so after the leaving group leaves, we're going to get this. Now, what is the geometry of this? What's the geometry of the number two carbon in this picture before the leaving group Tetra leaves? And what's the geometry after the leaving group leaves? Trigonal planar. So now I've kind of drawn this out to the side. It's out to the side. Now, what can happen now? Well, now the water could just come back. Now the water could just come back. But when the water comes back, is it going to come back in an alpha, a beta position, or both? Both. Because this is trigonal planar. And we know that when we attack something trigonal planar, we can attack from either direction. What we've been explaining here is meter rotation. And that's probably a topic you saw. Meter rotation is, even if you start with only the alpha form, it will quickly isomerize to give you both alpha and beta. Or even if you start with only the beta form, it will quickly isomerize to give you both alpha and beta. Because even if you start with only the beta form like we have here, sometimes the hydroxy will leave. And when the hydroxy comes back, it can come back in either the alpha or the beta positions. So this is called muter rotation, the fact that um, you always get an equilibrium between both the alpha and the beta forms, even if you start with only one of those. So even if your instructor didn't write the full mechanism out for this, it's good to be able to explain why this is happening in terms of our resonance stabilization. So when the hydroxy comes back, it can come back either in the up position or in the down position. I've been illustrating this for fructose, but of course this would work for any cyclic sugar. Usually the, uh, the example that people give is glucose. Mm -hmm. So that's the explanation for muter rotation. It's easy to muter rotate because this is very easy for this hydroxy group to pop off. Why is it easy for it to pop off? Because the carbocation is stabilized by resonance. And then sometimes when it pops off, it just pops back on. But when it pops back on, it might come in from a different direction than it left. Did you guys talk about um, glycosides? Yes. All right. We did glycosides. We did oxidation of aldoses with Br2 and H2O. Dilute HNO3, H2O, and heat. NaPH4. And then we're going to talk about protection. Uh, and step-by-step -step build up of degradation of sugars. So he's really covering everything in the chapter. Okay. Okay. And then he didn't cover it here, but in one of his practice exams, he had Fe3. Okay. So conceivably protonate. Mm -hmm. But who is the oxygen that's most interesting to protonate? No. This one. Oh. Because what's the point of protonating an oxygen to make it into a better leaving group? And which of these can be the most interesting leaving group? This one right here, as we were just discussing. So if you have a choice about who you're going to protonate, you should protonate the anomeric oxygen. So I'll start by protonating this oxygen. And then what would be a logical next step? 
leaving. Now the whole point of that is for the leaving group to leave. especially stable carbocation because there's, there's another resonance form where the positive charge is on the oxygen. Mm -hmm. 